Well, praise the Lord. Jesus Christ truly is the answer. Praise God. We thank God that there is a way. Praise God out of the dilemma that we face today. But uh, again, that song is true to every word that is uh, under a uh, pen there. Jesus is the answer to all of our problems. We're just turned to him. Praise God. And the Bible says there is a way that seemed right to man, but the end of that way usually ends up in death. But Christ is the way throughout Every generation, every situation that we possibly face, I cannot say it enough. He is the answer. Amen. Praise God. Once again, I'm James A. Dansby, pastor of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. And we're currently doing a series. Well, we're finishing up, really, today. We, we, we've taken this whole week uh, to kind of look at the Garden of Gethsemane and what Christ endured for each and every one of us. And uh, this is our last uh, day in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, but we... Uh, looking at uh, the prayers of Christ from the beginning of his ministry even to the end. And uh, this is prayer number 23 today, number 23. And uh, again, we're going to look at Matthew 26 again, uh, verse 36. Then coming Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go yonder and pray. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he came to his disciples, and finding them asleep, and said unto Peter, what? Could not ye watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for the eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying, the same words. Now, again, Jesus is, is still praying for himself here. Uh, and uh, basically, we want to look at uh, look at him praying uh, for the thing that he really feared the most, that it would soon pass. He wanted to pass that which he feared the most. And surprisingly, it, it, it's not all the... Uh, the, the, the betrayal is not even the pain he had to suffer. But that was something that he feared more than anything. And he was hoping that it would soon pass. Now, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Christ faced, you know, a lot of physical and emotional and spiritual uh, trials and temptation. And it caused him great agony, mental stress. His mind was bombarded, praise God, with thoughts of uh, what was going to happen, what was down the road, you know, from from the betrayal of Peter and, and the cross he had to carry up, that old hill and, uh, you know, the taunting uh, that uh, uh, the people at the foot of the cross, you know, threw at him. All these were on his mind, but that was one thing above all others. All these things were just trivial, uh, uh, something else that brought him the greatest pain, the greatest hurt, the greatest suffering that anybody could ever face. And just considering... Uh, 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 that moment that he had to endure while he was on the cross when the father would abandon him, abandon him. You know, I mean, that was the most hurting uh, thing that he could even dream of is that his father, uh, in that Matthew 27, 27, 46, I believe it was, Christ said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? On the cross, Christ cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And this is Christ's prayer on the cross, which weighed heavily upon his mind, even while he was in the garden. In the garden, he was looking more at the abandon of his father, how his father would forsake him more than any other trials and tribulation that he had to face. Now, just think about it. Think about it for a moment now. According to the scripture, 
Jesus Christ is God. Is that right? Praise God. I think the Bible is very plain about that. Uh, I think 1 John 5 and 8, it tells us that three that bear witness in the heaven, the Father and, and, the, and the Son and the Spirit. Praise God. Father, the Word, I think he says the Word and the Spirit, because we know the Lord, the Son is the Word. See, but now, and he said they are all one. So now, I think we agree that, uh, that, uh, that Jesus is God. And uh, I think first, uh, just regular John, John the disciple said, again, the word was made flesh and we endured among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the father. And Jesus himself said, uh, when you see me, you see the father. Praise God. And my father and I are one over and over and over again. So now, we can agree, I believe, that Jesus Christ, according to the Word of God, Jesus Christ is God. So now, if that be the case, according to the Scripture, it was God that was on the cross. Now, so what does, what does that mean? We mean that at that moment, at that very moment, that moment that he feared the most, God was forsaken God. God was, oh, get your mind around that. Can you wrap your mind around that? Uh, be careful now, don't hurt yourself. But God was forsaken God on the cross. This is what Jesus feared most of all, more than all the other uh, things, the betrayal, uh, uh, even the, 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 the uh, plucking of his beard and the thorns of uh, crown around his head and the whipping that he took. Uh, 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 he, those things hurt, yes. Those things cause pain. But the father forsaking him, and this was heavily on his mind, even in the Garden of Gethsemane. My God on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou to, uh, forsaken me? To be separated from God. Huh? That's the most terrible thing that can happen to anybody, but especially to Jesus Christ. Praise God, because him and his father, they were and they are still one. <laughs> Praise God. But now, why did, uh, why did God turn his back? Why did God turn his back upon himself? Hmm? Upon his son, Jesus Christ. Why did God turn his back upon himself? Well, because he was, Christ was and is, our substitute. Our surety, the Bible calls him. Our guarantee for salvation. Praise God. And Isaiah 53 says, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was on him. And with his stripes... We're healed. And he's not talking about no physical healing here, brothers. Huh? Praise God. He's talking about we're healed of our sin sickness. Praise God. That's the first healing you need. Don't be going to God asking for healing for your body when your soul is sick and you hadn't been healed inside of your soul. Praise God. But uh, Christ, he, 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 he God turned his back upon him. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because at that moment, there was a transference of our sin. The Bible said he was made sin for us. Praise God. Christ has redeemed us, the Bible said, from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Why did God turn his back upon himself, upon Christ, his son? Because he was our substitute. That cup, that sin cup, was being passed to him. Gethsemane was a dress rehearsal. Praise God. On the cross is where the actual transaction took place. Praise God. My sins and your sins transferred to Christ. Oh, praise God. I thank God for it. Amen. See, Christ was forsaken by the Father because he represented us. He represented us on the cross. We were the ones that deserve to be forsaken. We were the ones, praise God, that deserve all the agony, all the suffering that Christ endured in Gethsemane. We, 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 we. See, the Father forsook, he forsook him because at the very moment on, at that very moment on the cross, he became what we are. He became what we are, or what we were. I'm talking about Christian people now. I ain't talking about church folk, I'm talking about Christian folk. He became what we are. What, 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 what were we at that time? Dirty, low-down sinners. 
That's what Christ became. Praise God. In his soul and in his body, the sins of all, all of his people uh, from every nation throughout every generation, they were poured out on Christ. At this moment when he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Praise God. You know, I, I mean, God, he, I, I tremble, brother, just to think of all the sins, praise God, that just was committed this past week in places like Chicago. You know, that caused me to tremble. But think about all the sins of the world, all the sins of every generation, the generation that had not yet been born. All those sins fell on Christ at that moment. And at that moment, his father turned his back upon him, could not look at sin, said, Father, forgive me. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Praise God. But he took upon himself the sins of his people, the sins of the world, the Bible says. Praise God. He took upon himself our hell, the hell we deserve. See, hell, hell, hell is separation from God. If you don't know God now, you're actually in hell now. If you don't know him, you're separated. Huh? Christ was separated from his father at that very moment. And that was pure hell to him. Oh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, that what caused him to cry out like that. Praise God. Because at that moment, he was separated from his father. And that's what hell is. Hell is separation from God. Praise God. I believe that. I believe in Christ. Uh, I, I believe if you have believed on Christ today, then and have repented of your sins, you, you will never experience hell. No, no. He, he experienced it for us. Praise God. You'll never experience separation from, from God or, or separation from Christ. But now if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, Listen to me, praise God. If you have not trusted Christ as your Lord and your Savior, hell will be your final destination. And I say that, praise God, I say that with my fingers crossed because thank God I'm saved. Boy, I'm saved by the grace of God because I was on my way to hell. I was separated for God from God, but now I have a relationship. I have a relationship with my heavenly father. You can too. Praise God. Uh, 1 Peter 2, uh, 24, I think it says that uh, he bore our sins in his body on the tree. In that very moment, there was a passing of sin. Right there when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There was a passing of sin from you and me, for you and me, to Christ. In that very moment. Our holy God separated himself from Christ. He never experienced nothing like that. Praise God. Before the world was made, him and the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit were together. He never uh, experienced this kind of separation. And praise God, when that cup was passed to him with our sins, the Bible said, the Son fainted. Oh, God, the son refused to shine. The son had to put his hand over his eyes, couldn't even look at it. And therefore, I praise God, I thank God because he took our sins, because he took the separation. I shall never be separated. You, if you say, you'll never be separated from God. Praise God. Our sins are all gone. They're no more. If you have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's put away our sins, the Bible says, by the sacrifice of himself. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, uh, uh, God's Son has cleansed us from all of our sins. And therefore, we'll never have to cry, oh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because he said he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Praise God. My peace I give with you, not as the world give, give out thee. Let not your heart be troubled. Therefore, you know, I hear Paul in, in, in Romans 8, I hear Paul ask, asking three important questions in that Romans 8. Who shall separate us? Oh, God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Praise God. Y'all know the answer to that. Not nobody. Not one. Why? Because Christ my substitute. He has satisfied God's justice and God's righteous requirements on my behalf. Here, I hear Paul saying that Roman day, who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? I answer that. I'll answer that. Not well, nobody. Not one. Why? Huh? Because the charges have been laid on Christ. Our debt is paid in full. Praise God. 
Who is he, he said, that shall condemn us? Not one. Nobody. Christ has died in my place, in your place, if you have trusted in Christ as your Lord and Savior. On that cross, praise God, he cried, my God, my God. So whatever happens in the life of a believer, no matter how traumatic it is, God will never leave us. Christ will never leave us. Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of time. We'll never have to cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We'll never have to cry out because Christ Jesus He'll always be with us, praise God, even unto the very end. Are you saved today? Do you know Christ as your Lord, as your Savior? If you know Christ today, praise God, you will always have the comforter on your side. Praise God. If you like this video, go over there to that like button, please. Hit that like button. And then move on over to the subscribe button over there. S subscribe to this broadcast and be blessed. God got a blessing for you. God wants to speak to your heart today. Praise God. And until we come again, praise God. May God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. God bless you.